All right, so here's another type of example you might encounter. So now instead of just milligrams to, to something else, uh, some other uh, unit of measure for, for weight, now we have 20 milligrams per deciliter, and we want to convert it to milligrams per liter. Um, so the first thing you do, whip out your little chart again, um, look at how we can, how much a deciliter is per, for, uh, compared to liters. So if you look at your chart, you'll see you have one deciliter is equal to 10 to the minus one liters. Whatever that 10 to the power is um, next to or in the column, in that far right column on your chart, that is what one of, one of those, whatever that unit they're talking about is. So one deciliter is equal to 10 to the negative one liters. Because everything in that chart is in, term, uh, in terms of the basic, the basic unit. So the basic unit is liter, liters for volume. So everything in there is in terms of liters. All right. So now we have the, actually have the information that we need to con do this conversion. So I have 20. I like to write things as a fraction because I, especially when doing dimensional analysis, I think it's easier to see what cancels and what doesn't. Um, and I want, oops, excuse me, it's a deciliter, and I want liters. Um, so I want my deciliters to cancel out. So if my deciliters are on the bottom, where in my conversion factor that I'm going to use, right, to multiply by, where do I want my deciliters to be? Do I want them to be on the bottom or the top if I'm going to cancel? Right, I want them to be up here on the top. So I'm going to multiply by something equivalent to 1 that has deciliters on the top. So I, I look at the equivalence I have. 1 deciliter equals 10 to the negative 1 liters. So I want liters on the top and deciliters on, or excuse me, deciliters on the top and liters on the bottom. So if I divide this fraction, by 10 to the minus 1 liters, right? My deciliters stay on the top over here. Everything cancels out on the right side. And I know it's 1 deciliter to 10 to the minus 1 liters is the same as 1. Or you could think of it as a ratio, right? You got 1 deciliter per 10 to the minus 1 liters. In a ratio, it doesn't matter which one you write on the top and the bottom, right? It's still, these guys are still going to be equivalent. What you have is still equivalent to 1. So up to you how you want to think about it. Um, so I have 1 deciliter per 10 to the negative 1 liters is equivalent to 1. So I can multiply this guy, my 20 uh, milligrams per deciliter, by this, this uh, fraction. And it's, I'm not changing the amount that I have because this guy is equivalent to 1. So I have, I'm just going to write DL. You could write 1 DL. Anything times 1 is just itself. If you like that, that's okay. Oops. 10 to the minus 1 liters on the bottom. Now notice this deciliter, this D and the L, right, they're together because they're telling you about that unit of measure. So don't forget that um, when you're uh, working with these. That's how these are a little bit different from algebra. It's pretty much the only way in which they're different. Um, so, at least in how we treat them. So deciliters cancel with deciliters, and I have 20 milligrams um, over 10 to the minus 1 liters. Okay. So now I just have to fix up this 10 to the minus 1. So leaving it this way isn't incorrect, but it's not quite simplified. So you probably would get it wrong on an exam. Or if you are working, think about it, if you're working in the healthcare field and you left it this way, this will be something very difficult to measure out. So you want to actually do the math here and simplify this 10 to the minus 1. So we have to remember what happens with negative exponents. If they're in the bottom, we move them to the top, and they become the exponent becomes positive. So what we really have here is 10, 20 times 10 to the positive 1, which is the same thing as 10. We still have our milligrams hanging out, and our liters we're going to leave in the bottom. Right? We don't need to move that. We just move the number. Remember, there's always secret multiplication implied between these two things. Um, Unless we're talking about unit of measure, then they're, then they're stuck together. 
but in terms of the numbers and the, uh, the units of measure, there's implied multiplication there. So we can take this 10, it's this 10 to the minus 1 is separate from the liters. We can move it into the top. There's multiplication there. All right, so now we just have to do the multiplication. 20 times 10 is 200 milligrams per liter. And there you have it. So there is your conversion.